Hunting tanks from the skies is an effective option, and many commanders use this technique. The U.S. Armed Forces use the Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolt II and the Boeing AH-64 Apache to seek out and destroy tanks. Now, drones are becoming the expert's choice for destroying tanks on the battlefield. But how do these fighting aircraft operate, and what does the future look like for tank hunters? This is Military Mechanics, and today we will look at the rise and demise of tank hunter aircraft. The Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolt II, also known as the Warthog, has a cantilever low-wing monoplane wing with a wide cord. The aircraft has superior maneuverability at low speeds and altitudes because of its large wing area, high wing aspect ratio, and large ailerons. The aircraft can loiter for extended periods and operate under 1,000 foot ceilings with 1.5 mile visibility. An unusual feature is that many of the aircraft's parts are interchangeable between the left and right sides, including the engines, main landing gear and vertical stabilizers. The A-10 is battle-hardened to an exceptional degree, being able to survive direct hits from armor-piercing and high-explosive projectiles up to 23 millimeters. The cockpit and parts of the flight control systems are protected by 1,200 pounds of titanium aircraft armor, referred to as a bathtub. Although the A-10 can carry a considerable amount of munitions, its primary built-in weapon is the 30 by 173 mm GAU 10A Avenger Auto Cannon. One of the most powerful aircraft cannons ever flown, it fires large depleted uranium armor-piercing shells. The AGM-65 Maverick air-to-surface missile is a commonly used munition for the A-10. Other weapons include cluster bombs and Hydra-70 rocket pods. The A-10 is also equipped to carry GPS and laser-guided bombs. If this aircraft is not a flying tank, then what is? Well then, enter Boeing AH-64 Apache. This helicopter continues to be the nightmare of all tankers since the 1980s. Designed to employ its weapon systems against enemy tanks from a hover and then move from battle position to battle position, flying at treetop height. The Apache was a tank killer from its inception. This chopper can carry up to 16 AGM-114 Hellfire missiles, four 19-round pods for the 70mm Hydra rocket, or a combination of Hellfires and Hydras. That doesn't include its 30mm M230 cannon with 1,200 rounds of ammo. The latest Apaches are equipped with the AN-APG-78 longbow radars, which are capable of prioritizing targets. Longbow-equipped Apaches can locate up to 256 targets simultaneously within 50 kilometers. One of the revolutionary features of the Apache was its helmet-mounted display, the integrated helmet and display sighting system. However, these aircraft, which have been terrorizing tanks and ground personnel for decades, are under some serious threat. Air defense systems, which are gradually developing and becoming more portable, will cause heavy losses to these aircraft, which fly close to the ground and relatively slowly due to the nature of their mission. The ongoing war in Ukraine demonstrates how vulnerable these air support aircraft are to modern threats from the ground. The losses suffered by both sides on the Su-25, Ka-50 and Mile Mi-28 aircraft, which are considered the Russian counterpart of the American CAS anti-tank aircraft, paint a dark picture. In a contested air environment, 
even one that is imperfectly contested, as is the case with Ukraine, ground attack aircraft like the A-10 Warthog and the Apache AH-64 will suffer a degree of attrition that may quickly become unacceptable. Furthermore, drones are becoming increasingly sophisticated over time. Drones like the Turkish Baikar Bayraktar TB-2 are making headlines in Ukraine, and for good reason. These unmanned aerial vehicles have a wingspan of 472 inches and can deliver up to four laser-guided bombs to the enemy. Each costs around a million dollars, has a range of 93 miles, and can stay in the air for more than 24 hours. While it may seem like the heyday of the legendary tank destroyer birds are in the past, for now, they may still be around for a while, thanks to their advanced capabilities, experience on the battlefield, and the respect of the personnel who fought alongside them.